Hi everyone, I have had a couple questions about the observation paper that's due here in a few weeks and I just wanted to put a little video up to give you some clarification on the expectations for that paper. Um, as you can see in front of you on the screen, I do have the observation paper um, assignment expectations here with the description. So after you have observed for three hours, this is what you are going to reflect on in your paper. Um, so hopefully when you did your observation, you took this sheet and you were sure to observe on these categories right here. So when you go to draft your paper, you're going to create it in um, into three sections. And so the first section will be the observation itself. So whenever you reflect on your observation experience in that section, you're going to begin with a description of the observation setting. Next, describe what you've learned about this particular group of students and their interest and include the following. So in this whole first section of your paper, you can even title it observation if you want. So it was, it's clearly communicated that this is the observation section of your paper. Um, and then just give me some information, quoted examples of the children's conversations um, to represent what you've learned about this particular group of students, um, examples of their interactions with their caregivers, um, identify some of the interests of the children, identify the choices that they're making, making, discuss elements of active participatory learning that you observed, um, and then note the types of play that you see the children involved in. So again, describe all of these things in the context of your observation and how that all relates to um, high scope, developmentally appropriate practice, all those things. Um, the next section of your paper is going to be the planning section. So, so now that you've observed the children and you've seen their interactions, you've seen their interests, you've seen how they're making choices, um, you looked at that type of um, information, you can start to make some decisions about what would be best for that group of children. So say for example you have children that are talking about um, healthy snacks at snack time and then maybe you observe some other children or even the same couple children in addition to some some other children talking in the house area about healthy snacks and they're preparing meals and they're preparing healthy snacks. Um, maybe this theme you've heard on the playground of children talking about exercising and being healthy. So again, that would be kind of a common thread through that observation that you saw come out. So you could potentially say, oh, the children are talking about healthy choices and healthy bodies and healthy food. So that's an interest that I see emerging from the classroom. So based on your observations, you might clearly see some themes coming through of things that are children that children are interested in. Obviously since you're only observing for one day you're not going to have any lengthy um, you know interactions with these students to see if this is a consistent interest if it's something that's going on for a couple days or a week. What you're going to do is just do your best to take a guess on what you think would be a good interest to pull out from that observation to do some planning on. So um, so be creative. You may have to stretch it a little bit at finding an interest that you saw within that activity um, time that you observed for those three hours. Um, but again, if you have questions about this or you want to talk to me about um, some things that were happening during your observation and maybe what activity you should pull or what's appropriate, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm more than happy to talk through that with you. So the second section of your paper is planning. Um, and again, you can even title that section planning so we can keep all of the sections clear and organized and it's communicated um, in that assignment. So next, use this information to begin planning for this group. Within this section, include what do the children already seem to know. So again, you're going to have to use your background knowledge um, about development and different skill levels, um, about the content areas that we've been talking about in high scope, um, developmentally appropriate practice, what we know about child development. Um, again, use all of this information research to support what they seem to know based on your observations of them. Based on what you observe the children are interested in, what topics could you identify as emerging? List three to five topics. Maybe within your three hours you saw children that were really interested in healthy foods. Maybe you heard children talking about um, buildings. Maybe you saw children that were really interested in creating um, skyscrapers out of 3D art materials. So again, what types of interest do you see emerging based on your observation? List three to five of those topics. 
um, and, and just talk a little bit about how you got those. So why did you choose those three to five topics? What observation did you make that led you to make that decision? Next, you're going to determine which topic would suit this group best. So pick one from your list above, so one of these three to five here, and explain why this is the best choice for this particular group of learners. Maybe it's something that you feel you can really expand on um, in ideas in the classroom. Maybe it's something that you feel is an area that really um, suggests um, um, significant KDIs that you want to pull out to help support learning. Why did you choose that? Also, what type of activities could you introduce in the classroom in the various curriculum areas regarding this topic? So again, look at the different curriculum areas in your textbook um, so that you don't miss any. Um, you can use ideas from your textbook, um, anything that we've discussed on the discussion board, any other resources, um, and then create a web showing what materials or ideas um, you will add to the classroom to enhance, enhance your topic. Um, and it says see sample web provided. So I have provided a web, so let me call it up here. Um, so here's a web I did. And again, my web is very basic. Your web could be more extensive than mine. It can include more things. But a web is basically just a brainstorming tool. So I put the topic from interest. Again, I'm just using going with this theme of healthy bodies. Um, and I just kind of webbed out. I, I'm, you know, there really wasn't any rhyme or reason. I wasn't like going for content areas or KDIs. I just started thinking of ideas that I could put in there. Once I have these thought out, then I could narrow it down to what KDIs are they reflecting and supporting, um, what materials do I need to use. But again, your web can be as detailed as you want it to be. You can do ideas, you can do materials, you can do ideas and materials. You can try to do interest within different parts of your daily schedule. However you want to do it. I want to see how creative you're going to be in your web. Um, but this is just a sample of what I did for my web. And again, it's very basic, not a ton of ideas, but just some that I could implement in the classroom to support that interest of the student. So again, you, what your web is going to show is how you're going to support that interest um, in the classroom. Again, if you have questions about how to web, um, just let me know. So that's what you're going to do there. The next section of your um, paper is standard 4A. Again, that's what we're refer referring to when we look at these um, professional preparation standards for NACI. Um, so you did one for your DAP project and you're doing one for the observation paper too. So again, you're looking at 4A, understanding positive relationships and supportive interactions as a foundation of their work with young children. So how are you going to um, so reflect on how positive relationships and supportive interactions are the foundation of working with young children. Use examples from your observation. How can these interactions provide a rich, challenging learning environment for each child? So again, you're going to reflect on this standard in this section. So again, this only needs to be about a paragraph. Remember your written work. Um, I'm going to expect college level writing. Um, make sure that your information also includes this here, even though I do have this from um, an uh, previous assignment, go ahead and include the name of the site and telephone number. This you can put on your cover page with your name and date and title of the assignment as well. Um, and then again, if you have questions about how it's going to be graded, you can look at the grading rubric here as well. So I'm going to be grading, looking for things within the observation section, within the planning section, and with that NACI standard 4A as well. Um, Again, if you happen to have any questions about anything while you're um, drafting this assignment, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask me. Um, the biggest thing I want to look for is how you're connecting these two pieces, the observation piece to the planning piece. I want to see, are you able to take an observation and apply that information in the observation to the planning component? Can you? identify an interest in children and things that they need to learn developmentally and then reflect that in the planning phases. So how do you go from this point to this point? That's what I'm looking to see. Yes, it's very easy to reflect on what you're actually seeing. It's a little bit harder to take that information and apply it to how you're going to um, take the next step in that information. Um, so again, if you have questions about that, please don't hesitate to ask me. Um, Again, this isn't due for another couple of weeks, but I wanted to go ahead and give that information out to you now um, about the logistics of it. So good luck, and again, let me know if you have any questions.